Happy Friday, everyone. Well, one of the questions all of us want is, well, I want to get more healthy. I want to get more fit, right? But where do I start? And how can health coach help me? That is what we are discussing for a beautiful Friday morning today with Angie. Angie is a health coach and she has been helping her clients get healthier and fitter. Thank you so much, Angie, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. So the first step in health and on the way to health and wellness is definitely mindset. So it can be very overwhelming if you're comparing where you are today to what your ideal healthy lifestyle is, or if you try to jump from where you are to what you consider that ideal of a healthy lifestyle. Um, and this can keep people from progressing, from even starting. So the thing that I like to point out is that a lifestyle is all it is, is the totality of little tiny daily habits that are implemented over time, one to two at a time. And then also on the same line of mindset, um, sometimes there's guilt or shame to work through in the beginning um, to where you're coming more from a place of love and compassion for yourself. And then um, motivation techniques like digging down to what your why is. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's really just what's motivating to you and deeply personal to you. Like for me, I have um, three grandsons. Two are three years old and one is one and a half. And they are always so active, wanting to play play on the floor doing puzzles, under the table, running outside, and I don't want to miss that. So that's my why of staying um, active and healthy. Wow, Angie, you look amazing. I thought you were in your mid-30s or something when you said grandsons or something. I'm almost 50. <laughs> Wow. Well, you look amazing, uh, fit and healthy, that, that topic that, that we are discussing today. So talk to us, what is the difference between um, a health coach and a nutritionist um, or a wellness coach or a personal trainer? These terms, we all get very confused about it, right? Okay. Well, first thing to understand is that it depends what your goals and preference are, preferences are at the moment of which one's um, appropriate and also people that are in this line are passionate about it so they may hold one or two or more certifications so it just really is a personalized approach so you'll want to um, just go with that so a registered dietitian or a nutritionist will prescribe a particular meal plan and a health coach will do things like help you learn how to read nutrition labels, um, share recipes with you, tips on how to cook healthy food, how to explore superfoods, how to just add in healthy foods to your regular diet um, according to your goals and preferences, help you deconstruct why you're having cravings or recurrent cravings. Um, they help you develop a plan for when you overindulge because it will happen, so it should be part of your plan. Um, as far as a personal trainer, that would be someone that would create a specific exercise um, workout session and lead you to it. A health coach will um, help you add in daily activity to your lifestyle. Um, and if you're interested in implementing uh, specifically an exercise program, a health coach can help you determine what kind of exercise based on your own preferences and what you like and your personality, what would, what would maybe be a good fit for that. As far as a wellness coach, um, sometimes those terms, health coach, wellness coach, can um, blur the lines and um, be used interchangeably. So I wouldn't get hung up on that. What would be most important is to, since it's a relationship built of trust, it would be more important to find someone that you're comfortable with their personality, their credentials. If they have a specialty, is that the specialty you're looking for? And um, do they have multiple certifications? 
Um, like I have also meditation certification and taken classes on behavior change. Um, a lot of health coaches will offer a free uh, session. I call mine strategy se session. So really just attend, see if you vibe with that person. If you don't, there's always, there's another one that you can have a session with. Um, the most important thing is that you're comfortable with them. So, um, so sort of like what I would frame a health coach is sort of like a chief habit changing person who becomes your buddy, right? Is that a right way of categorizing a health coach? That does, um, that sounds right. What we do, we have a, a knowledge center and can help with um, information that you're looking for because there is so much information out there. It, we have learned it, um, heard the studies, um, and can help you take your um, preferences and focus on your bio-individuality and navigate, uh, help you navigate the mental and physical aspects of change and um, develop a roadmap to health by breaking down your big goals into little tiny daily actionable habits. I think, I think, yeah, I think that, that this is like health coach is your chief execution officer, if you think about it, right? And, and all everyone's telling us, so oh, do this, do this, but the health coach will put it in place according to our personality, like my personality would be different than someone else's and tailor it, right? Personalized, tailor it for me personally, according to what I can achieve towards uh, helping me achieve that goal, right? Is, is that how? Absolutely, because not only are you different than everybody else. You also are wanting to go somewhere different than everybody else. Not everybody has the same goals. Um, like if you're wanting to um, train for a triathlon, that's a lot different than me wanting to keep up with my grandkids or um, just feeling good. And it's, it's totally personalized. And a health coach would be a trusted partner, a source of judgment-free encouragement and and also with that um, knowledge base. And if there's something that you need from a health coach that is outside of their scope of practice, they also have a good network to refer you to um, a, a practitioner in that field. Okay, so no, I think that, uh, and I just wanted to add, there's a, a research and scientific data that proves that health coaching after the doctor visit, the people who engage in health coaches such as yourself see better outcomes and lower healthcare costs. I just wanted to throw it out, out there. You know, the data that uh, reinforces that, what you're saying. That, that is very true. So um, one of the things that got me interested in this is my own Hashimoto's diagnosis about uh, six years ago. And when you're first told, this is what you have, this is your uh, medication, you will be on this forever, there's nothing that can be done about it. Sometimes that's what we're told in a traditional doctor's office. Um, that is a, a lot of overwhelming feelings that come with that. And you start reading into it and seeing what some people are doing. And then you learn about integrative medicine and um, Ayurveda, different things that have helped other people. And that is a lot of information. So having a health coach that has a little more um, experience dealing with that can help you navigate that. I mean, as soon as I found out, I, I didn't know what to do and had a, ordered a giant stack of books and just started going through it. Um, and that was really all I had at the time until I started um, asking questions and seeing what kind of other uh, professionals were in my area that deal with this. And um, I could have saved a lot of time if at the time I knew that there were health coaches that were able to help navigate all of that information. So that's very interesting. We didn't plan on talking about your personal story, but um, I'm just curious, um, we're gonna extend the session for a few more minutes. 
So did you go to a naturopath or, or did you change your lifestyle? Talk to us a little bit about your personal story and what it is now. After six years, are you free of Hashimoto's? What does it take, right? Well, in the very beginning, I just knew that I didn't feel well. Um, I had a lot of fatigue, joint pain. Um, I was tired all the time. Um, muscle aches. Every time I tried to work out, it almost... Um, it made it worse and made me feel sick. So I originally went to a traditional doctor and um, everything was fine as far as my levels. They just said, just take this pill and everything will be fine. Well, it, it didn't ever, start, I didn't ever start feeling better. So I thought, well, maybe it's my hormones. So I went to a doctor and had all those tests done. And that's actually where I was um, diagnosed with the Hashimoto's before they just told me my thyroid levels were just a little bit off and needed to take a medication for the rest of my life. So this was a place where I started and I started with, um, with them and went through, I worked with a dietitian to do testing for food sensitivities and I tried everything. They give you a bunch of supplements and really my takeaway is some of the things I did helped a little bit. Some of it was um, not as necessary, but the body is always trying to get to balance, to homeostasis. And all we really need to do is try to support that process. And it doesn't have to be as complicated or um, as stressful as maybe I made it in my process. I wanted to fix it immediately. I wanted my test scores to be perfect right away. So I went to lots of different practitioners. I tried lots of different supplements. Um, it, it just would have been nice to have someone to talk through that with and to, um, and to guide me through that process. Um, because if you, when I talked to anybody else about it, they said, well, didn't the doctor say you'd be fine and just take your medicine? I was like, but I don't feel fine. And it just, it took a long time before um, I finally found a nurse practitioner in the area that is an integrative medicine practitioner. And, and that was really my actual, what I would consider my first step on the recovery journey. I feel great now. I have tons of energy and, um, one of the main things I found is that I'm lactose intolerant. I did not know that. Um, when you are, uh, when you have the same foods all the time, it can be a little hard to realize what's, what's bothering you. Um, cause so at first I took everything out and then just adding things back in. Then I found out, well, I don't, I'm not necessarily sensitive, necessarily sensitive to gluten like um, however many percentage of people diagnosed with Hashimoto's are. But dairy was something that was a problem for me. My, um, I had some tests done to check my vitamin levels. My vitamin D was a little bit low. I think um, just in regular health and immunity, uh, vitamin D can be low for a lot of people because um, we put sunscreen on. We don't go outside all day like we used to. Um, so really, it was a lot of little different things that got me to feeling better. And once I realized that that's how you need to approach it in small daily habits, instead of deciding, I want to get better. So tomorrow, I'm going to start exercising all the time. And tomorrow, I'm going to take everything out of my diet and um, only have fruits and vegetables or whatever. Um, it really was just stepping back, working with my practitioner, and changing my habits one little step at a time to get me to the point where I feel great. So uh, just one last question. What's your meal like? What's your meal plan like? What do you eat? The, just talk to us on a daily basis. What is it that you do? Um, I have a lot of fruits and vegetables, lean meats. Um, I tried for a while to go vegan and it didn't work with my with my body. So um, I don't do that. I I have a lot of sensitivity. <clears throat> if you're 
interested in Ayurveda, I'm a classic Vata, so anything with caffeine, um, any stimulant like that is hard on my body. So I stopped with the Diet Dr. Pepper, so I was having a lot, and um, add more water. So my regular day is uh, water, added protein in um, a protein, fruits and vegetable shake, and then um, just lean meats, protein, nuts, seeds, things like that. Every once in a while, um, have a dessert. I don't ever say anything's off the table and, and just go for the foods that make me feel good. And what about the um, exercise, meditation? You, you were a meditation teacher, right? Yes, meditation is definitely a part of my life. Um, on a daily basis, sometimes more than once, depending on what's going on throughout my day. Um, it can be a 20 minute session or it can just be a little moment of overwhelm and stopping and doing some breathing for two or three minutes to get back on track. Um, I walk a lot and I have a lot of movement in my um, daily lifestyle. As far as exercise, I do some weight training just for like 20 minutes twice a week um, because I do have a smaller frame and have trouble keeping uh, the muscle on and keeping the, the muscle tone. So I do that. Um, but mostly I've gone from where I used to have a very sedentary lifestyle when I was uh, working in HR and corporate world. And my tracker would say like 3000 steps for the whole day. And it's a lot higher now just from um, walking my dog, walking on my treadmill during between classes sometimes during, um, in client sessions, things like that. And then um, daily activities sometimes. Go, to, go on hikes instead of sitting down and watching a movie or getting a drawer out and putting it on the bed while I'm watching TV and cleaning that out so I'm not just sedentary all the time. Okay, that's uh, that. I think that makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing your personal story. I wasn't planning on including that, but it just happened. And, and it, I think it gives hope to many, uh, so many people out there that they can also do it, you know, when, when you, you can do it. And it's always little by little, like you said, small habits, you, we end up doing that. Anything else you'd like to add, Angie, before we wrap up? Such an amazing session. Thank you. Um, the only thing I would like to say is that there are people out there that that um, are encouraging and would like to help and um, just take it slow and build momentum. It's not it's not something to jump right into um, that can cause uh, frustration. It's just building momentum and building that daily lifestyle to what you want it to be. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Everyone keep supporting us. We are over 200,000 followers and we are launching a lot of uh, interesting uh, platform, including workshops and including some of the Q&A sessions. So stay tuned and have a great weekend, everyone. Namaste. Thank you so much, Angie, for your Thank talk you. today. Bye-bye.